Hey folks, thank you for watching. This is the Ace PC Power Pocket PC W5 Pro. That is a fully functioning Windows 10 computer. This right here is a Raspberry Pi. That is the Pocket PC's ugly red-headed stepchild. Less expensive, runs Linux, or you could put a Windows 10 version on there, but it does absolutely nothing. But um, fully functioning PC that runs Windows, a monitor that's portable. The PC is powered by five volts of USB power, which is ideal in a situation where you're in a remote location or camping or just wanting to travel very lightly. This is awesome. Okay, so it's a cell phone battery or like a charger for cell phones. Over here is an, another battery, which I keep these separate because I don't want to charge, I don't want to, sorry, power the computer and the monitor from the same device in case that monitor draws down the power to the point where that PC doesn't have power. This is a USB cable, which is connected to the battery. It's a USB-C, so it has a little bit higher amperage. Okay, here we have an HDMI cable cable between these two so if you're in an area where you have a really large monitor you can feel free to hook this up to a large monitor and use it over here is a piece of bird poop but that's not the topic of our discussion over here is a GPS puck which is used for location services on here I did download all of the Microsoft maps and they come with the operating system I wanted to have those for offline use where I can use my GPS and get my location, take a look at the topography around me, roads, things like that. So it's nice to have. Because I concentrate on resiliency and being prepared for some issues with our infrastructure, which is quite fragile, I am going to use that computer over here to transmit an email using this radio. That's a modem, that's a radio. This modem is used for high frequency transmissions, in this case 3.5 megahertz or 80 meter band. I'm powering the radio with water. I'm just kidding. I'm powering it with 120 volts. There is a power supply regulator on there that takes 120 and converts it into 13.8 volts. Why did I use 120 volts when I could use 12 on this side? I want clean power that's 13.8 volts. When you're transmitting data, 13.8 volts is ideal. You don't want anything lower than 12 volts. And if you go below that or around that 12 volt area, your data transmission suffer and you end up transmitting a lot more. It means you waste your battery power and you keep others from getting on the air. This is the 12 volt side. It's connected to this Pactor modem. That's just a meter. Okay, so on here, the other thing, in addition to the 12 volt, I have an input for a solar panel, which I use to charge, or a car charger, or just regular commercial power. Over here are USB ports for power, five volts. So I could power these devices with this battery, but I wanted to keep them separate because this is connecting to that over Bluetooth and I don't have to have this anywhere near that. I can keep it at least 10 meters away, or maybe even more. Um, I am going to use this for Wi-Fi connections too, but in a remote area, that's not a question. You don't have that. So I have an email I want to send real quick, and I've been listening to this transmission for a while. I don't see anybody on the window for the waterfall, and I haven't been hearing them. There was a transmission going through earlier. I definitely do not want to step on that person if there is somebody out there. This is the name of the game when you're using radios for transmissions, whether it be amateur or you're out at sea, always listen first. You may be trampling somebody's important message. So be cautious, be kind, respect the rights of others. All right, so over here, I'm going to send a message to Leslie. Leslie is a friend of mine who owns and operates an RMS Express node, or I should say gateway, that's the proper term. And she volunteers her system for use to receive and send messages. So she's out in the western part of the United States in Washington state, and people from all around the world in 
different countries like it could be Canada, the United States, or even Mexico, maybe out in the ocean, they can use her station to send an email into the internet so that that email is delivered once it gets to her computer through just the regular internet that's high speed. So if you're telling somebody how you're doing out in the mountains or you're out at sea and you want to post a weather report so that other people know what the weather's like, you know, if conditions are deteriorating or you want to pick up a weather report, it's very useful to have. So it's real nice. Or in this case, if you're um, out in a residential area and your power has gone out or you don't have the infrastructure to support communications, you can maintain some communications and have some level of civility when uh, things go down. Like I say, our infrastructure is a little bit fragile. It's nice to be able to communicate. You know, the government has their system called shares and they can maintain communications and the civilian population has you know, this amateur radio system and people out in the ocean have marine systems. So it's all nice to have. Anyways, I've been listening. No transmissions. Looks like we're clear. We're clear to go. I'm going to transmit. And there we go. So that is beautiful. Look at that. So N7 LOB is the call sign of Leslie. And she's accepting my email. So the conditions are pretty good. I'm only transmitting at 20 watts. Uh, I don't want to go much higher because I'm not sure how much that can take. I will not push 100 watts or 50. Probably would go with five if I can, if I can get away with it, because lower power means less charging on the solar panels and definitely a lot less uh, strain on that battery. So, email's going through and there it goes. And I'm also receiving an email from somebody, which is kind of cool, so I can read that email a little bit later. But um, all that's done with this little device here. That's what's controlling everything. And so if you're out there camping or just bugging out, as some people call it, um, you can fit all this inside of a backpack. Even that ugly beast right there might be a little bit of a larger backpack and your battery. But yeah, it's feasible. It's much better than carrying a large marine battery and trying to power this thing with this huge battery system and it's nice. One of the things that I've had in the past that's an issue is keeping my laptop charged and that's really not an issue when I can plug in USB devices or even run this off of solar power with a small battery in between. Alright, so there we go. Um, look at that. Email's complete. So you hear that? That was Morse code. So each system is identifying itself. Pretty cool, you know, in case uh, somebody transmits on somebody else's transmission, you can listen to the Morse code and, you know, maybe contact them and say, hey, I'm not sure if you heard me or not. Okay, that's it. Uh, the Ace PC, Pocket PC, W5 Pro, really cool device.